The Montreal Canadiens were involved in the biggest trade of the offseason, seeing Eric Carlson getting sent from the Sharks to the Penguins. Montreal, in return for giving away Hoffman and Pitlick, bring back Jeff Petrie and bring in Casey DeSmith, and we're going to be discussing the real reason Montreal did this trade. But before we do that, we are very proud to announce our first ever sponsor on the channel, and that is Rentals.ca. Guys, Rentals.ca is Canada's largest apartment hunting platform. They have the most rental listings across Canada. You can get apartments, houses, condos, whatever you want. Everywhere in Canada, and that's the best part, whether it's Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa, their website is super clean and easy to use. And as you can see, they have really intuitive maps where you can just really look at the specific neighborhoods that you want, and then they generate amazing apartment rental listings for yourself. Yeah, and Jesse, this is a company I have used, right? As a lot of you guys know, I moved from Newfoundland to Quebec City, and Rentals.ca, without before they even sponsored this channel, was actually the website I went to to find the apartment <laughs> listings. So it's something I genuinely enjoy, a website that is truly clean, easy to use, and really, really nice. And it's honestly, again, having the most rental listings across Canada makes it your number one source if you want to go find your next apartment house or condo and you've probably seen their billboards these big blue billboards in every major city they advertise themselves the most rentals across canada so if you want to go find your next home rentals.ca is your spot to do it see the link in the pinned comment and even if it's just to support us in our cause we'd really appreciate if you went and checked them out all right jesse let's get into this video the real reason the Habs made the trade, of course, we already talked about the Eric Carlson trade, but here's the Montreal aspect of it. Montreal acquires Jeff Petrie, Casey DeSmith, Nathan Legare, and a second round pick in 2025 for giving up the corpse of Mike Hoffman and the 13th or 14th forward in Rem Pitlick. There's a lot to love about this trade. First reaction when you saw this, I mean, was it the same as mine? It's like, really? That's all we had to give up? I think the real reason is we want to make the playoffs next year. I think, you know, getting rid of Hoffman, getting rid of Joanne, you know, even if it's not quite the playoffs, like we're just making such a positive step in this right direction, right? So I feel like a big part of the real reason of why we're doing this is the culture shift is on in Montreal in full effect. We're getting rid of players like Jonathan Drouet, Mike Hoffman, where they had the school in the world, but it was really like, the big highlight when we see them back checking when really just just being something that we should really expect from them so now we're replacing players like that with alex newhook who just has a big motor likes to you know just go every night and then we're also creating space as well another big reason for this trade you know is creating space for those youngsters like you know rhp mm -hmm. Rafael harvey Pinard. like you know he's going to be bringing it you know so it's just that culture shift and i feel like just watching the habs next year without Drew Wang, without Hoffman, no, without talking too bad on them. But like this team is going to look different, but it's also going to feel different as well. Yeah, you're very, very right. Now, I will, I will say, I know a lot of people are probably questioning Jeff Petrie because he had sort of an unceremonious departure from Montreal saying like, yeah, he was clearly asking for a trade. He seemed to want to go back to the U.S. But guys, the thing is, you got to remember too, he had a modified no trade clause and Montreal was not on that no trade clause. He's perfectly fine going back to Montreal. So whatever issues Petrie had, he has no problem visiting them again. But the thing is, Regardless, right now, Jeff Petrie is Montreal's number one right-handed defenseman. He's probably their second, maybe third best de defenseman, depending on, you know, how you view Caden Gooley. But a lot of people, Jesse, including Eric Engels, say that Jeff Petrie is probably going to get traded. And, you know, I, I know you said the real reason is probably a culture shift and opening up space for the youngsters. And I think that's the main reason. But this is another thing here. It's just another indication that Ken Hughes is going out and getting assets right? He's getting assets like Petrie who can be moved. And if we take a look here, right, not retaining the salary on Hoffman or Pitlick was key because now they have retention spots because you only have a limited number of those. And if they retain 50% of Petrie's contract, he's only two and a half million dollars a year for two years to any contending team that might want him. And honestly, even though he's 35 years old and he's going to be 36 in December, Jesse, he's still got a lot to give. I mean, you got to think there are going to be a lot of potential suitors for his services come, whether it be this off season or even partway into the next season. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. You know, um, for me, I would have to say it looks probably a little bit more likely than not that he will get traded kind of before camp and everything else. You have to feel like obviously Allen's kind of uh, Jake Allen is on the way out right now kind of losing that kind of starting spot and and so you had to feel like the writing was kind of on the wall for him here but 
again, you know, it's kind of those low risk sort of moves, you know, and kind of taking advantage of a little bit of space that we had to f- facilitate that Eric Carlson trade. But what's really interesting and what I also like, one of the really big reasons of why we're doing this, it's a really low risk, high reward sort of trade, you know, typical Kent Hughes type of trade again, because again, you know, getting Casey to Smith, Sure, he didn't have the best numbers, but, you know, the Penguins weren't the best last year. Mm -hmm. And as we see, it's like, you know, I feel like that could be a good improvement upon Jake Allen, right? Like, could definitely see that that combination, that tandem of Samuel Montembeau and Casey DeSmith. Now, maybe that's not the answer long term, but again, low risk, high reward. He could end up playing a lot better in Montreal than he has in the past. He still has played some okay hockey, even with Montreal playing against the Penguins this year. Like, he, you know, he played well. Um, so it's, you know, one of those things where this could end up working out really well, kind of, again, we're building the team just slowly, incrementally. It was, our goaltending wasn't the best. Now, after this trade, it's not, you know, drastically better, but is it better in my opinion? No, is it a small improvement at this point in time? Just given Jake Allen, where he is at this point of his career, obviously still a great goaltender in his time, but, you know, kind of getting over that hump, so to speak a little bit there. So again, I feel another latent reason of why this uh, trade is such a good move. Yeah, and it gives security. And uh, as Mark Dumont mentioned in his article, Casey DeSmith comes in as security at a position of need, with Primo having to go through waivers if he doesn't make the Canadians out of camp. Either way, his addition creates flexibility for the Canadians. I mean, it could open up an Allen trade, like you mentioned, especially Primo on seats him at camp. But if they lose a goalie, they have another one with NHL experience in the fold regardless, right? So even if Jake Allen doesn't get moved, you have a backup plan. Now, what where it gets a bit interesting is the contracts, because Samuel Montembeau is not getting paid a lot. It's like, what, under $2 million a year for just this year. Then he's an unrestricted free agent. Casey DeSmith, $1.9 million this year, unrestricted free agent. Jake Allen still has an extra year after this on his contract. So mm-hmm. he's actually the only mm-hmm. one under contract for next, <laughs> next season. So with DeSmith and Montembeau being unrestricted free agents at the end of this year, do you see a potential move for one of them coming maybe to a contender who's looking for a very, very solid 1B as they're heading into the playoff season around the trade deadline? Because you got to think the Habs will try to capitalize before they both leave maybe without getting the Habs anything in return. We're getting those picks because as much as we would want Jake Allen to probably be traded out of those three, as you just mentioned, for that reason, it's he's probably the hardest to trade yeah. out of all of them. And you have to feel like there would have to be some sort of caveat in uh, making that deal happen. I think that that could still be advantageous for the Habs to do all the same. I think Kent Hughes is actively looking at that, but I think you have to feel so great, um, you know, if you're Jeff Gordon, if you're Kent Hughes, like this is something you've wanted to do for a long time. You wanted to kind of open up that pipeline a little bit more for those younger players. They really took their time and they've done it. They've really addressed what needs to be done on this team. And it just, as a Habs fan, I think I echo so much of our feelings like, This is just refreshing to have a general manager that knows specifically what we need to do for this team, what players to keep, which players to not, which players to develop, which players to snag and, you know, turn into blue chip type prospect type players, you know. So for me, it's again, it's just a huge W and I'm just really, really excited about this. Yeah, went use strikes again. (laughs) Well, (laughs) dubs, let's go. But yeah, I, I think I think you're right, right? And I think the initial reaction, I know there's some people not so happy that Petrie's coming in, potentially blocking young prospects. And I do get that if the Habs don't move him. But at the same time, he's still a very good defenseman and a solid veteran presence. And right D is where the Habs had the biggest weakness. They really only had Savar and uh, Justin Barron on the right side specifically. So, um, But I think it's just a masterclass by Kent Hughes and asset management once again. You give up mm-hmm. two arguably negative assets in Hoffman and Pitlick. You get back an easily yeah. flippable asset to a contender in Petrie. You get a goalie on a $2 million a year contract that gets you an insurance policy. You get a prospect who's not doing much in the AHL and Nathan Legare, but he has some potential. And a second round pick. And we can't forget that Lane Hudson was the second round pick that the Habs ended up getting back in the Brett Kulak trade. So all in all, nothing but positives from us here. We think we love the trade. What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comment section below, whether it's a win or a loss, but I think most of you will agree with us. That'll do it for this news edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 7,000 subs. We'd really appreciate it. And also while you're down there, check out rentals.ca, the kind sponsors of this video. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.